Hello, and welcome to Unit 2, Lab 2. In this lab, we're going to make heavy use of problem decomposition, which is breaking down difficult problems into smaller ones so that they're easier to complete and manage. We're going to start by creating a script that lets us connect a list of points to draw a letter. Each point will be made up of an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. In thinking out loud, we're given the coordinates to draw an outline of the letter A. We can then use each of these points to have a sprite draw lines from one point to the next. At least that's the idea. However, the problem with our go to x, y block is that there's two inputs. There's one for x and one for y. And so we're going to have to create a block. We're going to name it go to point, but this block is only going to have one input. And it's going to take in a list and be able to take out the x coordinate from this list and the y coordinate from this list. More on that in just a sec. Let's get started on creating this new block called go to point. I'm going to right click in my scripting area and I'm going to make the block and name it go to point. And it's going to take in a list item. I'm going to name that variable point. Now by using percentage point, that'll automatically create the input. It's just a shortcut. I could have also pressed the plus sign and typed in the input name for a new input. It says here that we're going to use the go to block inside of this new block. So I'm going to bring it in and connect it in my block editor. Now the issue here, as I mentioned before, is that we're going to pass in one input, which is a point, and go to expects two separate inputs. So Gamal offers a suggestion. He says, I bet we can use the item of block, and maybe that's going to be what we're going to do. We're going to go to the variables palette, and we're going to use the item of block to pull out the x coordinate and the y coordinate from this point. So when someone passes in a point, item one is going to be the x value. And if I use item 2 or I define item 2 of point, that should be the y value. So then I can use these inside of my go to block to pull out those values just from one input. But that one input has to be a list. Alfie then says, I wonder if we can make our go to point block show that it expects a list as input. And Alfie, you are right, there is a way to do that. If we actually click on the parameter point, Right next to input name, there's this little black arrow pointing to the right. If we click on it, you'll get a whole list of different data types that this variable could represent. So it could represent an object, a number, text, any type, a reporter. But what we want is a list. So I'm going to select list. And when I hit OK, now you'll notice that the parameter point looks a little bit different. It now has these three little dots. And what that means is that go to point is going to expect a list as an input. So if we pass in a number, go to point is going to error out and it's going to say, hey, something's wrong. I can't process this. Now, the cool thing about Snap is that you can do this in other blocks that you create. You can have it expect a number or expect text or expect an object. And Snap will throw an error if any other data type gets passed into that block. In fact, in some languages, it's required to define the data type that you're going to pass in as an input or that you're creating a variable as. This can be a helpful reminder for what the block does or what it expects to do with that value. Now to test out my go to points block, I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to drag it into the scripting area. So I put it in the motion palette and go to point should be able to go to any point on the stage. So let me just actually copy some of these values from this list, just so I don't have to write them from scratch. There we go. And let's test it out. I actually want to put my pen down just to make sure that I see it going from one point to the next. And let's go to negative 50 comma 20. And when I hit it, it drew a line from 0, 0, which is where the sprite started. And now it went to negative 50 comma 20. Let me try going to 10 comma 120 right after that. Perfect. It looks like the sprite is moving correctly. So it is able to take in a list that has two items and draw a line to that location on our stage. The issue is that I can't just pass in a list that has all these list items in it because this is going to definitely error out. Let me actually try passing 
A into go to point, and when I run it, it just like did nothing. It just went right back to the middle. Let me clear the stage just to see what happens if I try running it again and nothing happens. I think Snap is just confused on what to do. But Alfie says that we can use our go to point block for each of the points in the list. So if we access each item in the list separately, we can use for each to do that and pass them into go to point. So I'm going to bring in the for each block and I want to go into every single item of A. Actually, it's possible that Snap didn't do anything just before when I was trying to go to point A because I don't think A was initialized. Let me just see if it was. Actually, yes, it was. Never mind. By checking off A in the variables palette, I'm able to see the values of each item inside of A. And if it wasn't initialized, this would have been blank. So let me get rid of it for now. And let's go through each item of A and go to that point. So every single item is going to be a point and we're going to go to that. Let me try running it right now. And look at that. It almost looks like an A. There's a couple of bugs. So the first issue was that we drew a line from 0, 0 or the center of the stage before we started drawing our letter A. So that's a bug. The second bug I'm noticing is that it didn't close the letter A on the bottom left. So if you look carefully, you can see that it's kind of like open. Maybe the third bug I'm noticing is that it never drew the inside of the letter A. So we're going to have to come up with some points to do that. I'm going to leave that job up to you. My only hint is that you're probably going to have to use pen up and pen down selectively. Otherwise, you're going to get lines that connect where you don't want them to connect, just like we have 0, 0 being connected to the beginning of A. I think you guys can handle it. So I'll see you on page two.